Now that we have incredible AI image models like Flux, the area that seems to be heating up the most in generative AI is actually the video space. Image to video and text to video are sort of at the forefront of this new movement. And so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test three different AI text to video models. We're gonna start with Kling Pro, we're gonna go with Luma Dream Machine, and then also Minimax. Let's jump in and take a look. To test these models out, I'm gonna use pixeldojo.ai. Not only do you have access to cutting edge AI image tools like image to image, text to image, you also have all of these video models all in one location. And the way that we're gonna test this is using the new movie benchmark that Meta released just a few days ago. Meta has this pretty amazing looking new Meta Movie Gen model. They haven't released it to the public yet, but what they have done is they've released a thousand prompts that you can use for text to video generation so that you can sort of benchmark and compare apples to apples across the board and how these models actually generate their outputs. And I happen to have all of that right here in this massive spreadsheet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab just a few of these at random. We're gonna take a look at them now. Stick around to the end because I am gonna do some image to video testing as well just as a little bit of added bonus. You can see I've got three different windows open here. So we're gonna start on the left and go to create and then the text to video tab. And then you'll see we've got Kling Pro as the model selected in this first screen, Luma Dream Machine in our second, and Minimax AI in the third. And here's our first result from Luma Dream Machine. Now, one thing to note is Luma tends to generate a video in under a minute, whereas Kling Pro tends to take somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes and a little bit somewhere in between for Minimax. Now, let's take a look at the result here. We've got a crab, we've got our octopus, you got the ocean, so, so far so good. And what the heck is going on there? Okay, so it's uh, like morphing into this gigantic beast of some sort, really weird. It's kind of jerky motion. It doesn't look very realistic. And then you've got the octopus just sort of sitting there the entire time, not really moving at all. Unsurprisingly, Minimax came back Second, so let's take a look at this. We've got the crab up in the upper left. We've got our octopus down in the bottom right. Let's see the motion. Okay, the octopus has a nice, pretty realistic looking motion and movement. The crab, other than being sort of gigantic, does at least seem to move realistically, or at least somewhat. Not too bad of a result. Uh, you know, not quite photorealistic. Uh, and you've got some problems like the missing antenna. We've got kind of one huge antenna on one side of the crab and then it's missing on the other side altogether. But not a terrible result overall. I would say this is definitely better than what we got back from Luma Dream Machine by far. Now one extra detail to note over here on the Minimax side, I do have the use prompt optimizer enabled. This basically takes your prompt that you provide and then it optimizes it on the back end using what I presume to be their own large language model to add some extra enhancements and detail. All right, and finally, we've got our entry here from Kling Pro. I don't know what this is in the middle of the scene already, so this is gonna be interesting to say the least. That does not look like an octopus. What the heck is that? Um, you've got just a barely a little bit of movement. It looks like it's from the perspective of maybe a scuba diver sort of bobbing around in the water. So that's a nice fluid motion and movement, but I don't know what types of creatures these are. It's definitely not a crab and an octopus though. That's really bizarre. So out of these three for the first round, I've gotta give it to Minimax. That's definitely a better result than the others. So I'm gonna go ahead and save all of these videos to a public gallery so you can go back and you can check these out for yourself and see what I mean. And for our second video, let's create something pretty simple. A basketball through hoop then explodes. Really simple prompt here but we should hopefully get some really dynamic action from this. No surprise yet again, the first result back is from Luma Dream Machine. Let's go ahead and full screen this and take a look. We've got the basketball, it's not really moving. I don't know what quite is going on. It looks like the basketball is maybe deteriorating towards the end there. The hoop starts to sort of fall apart, the net moving around. It almost looks like the net might be exploding here. You gotta say the prompt adherence not that fantastic here with Luma Dream Machine. Every video sort of has this just kind of slow motion panning to it from what I can see. All right, here's our result from Minimax. Let's go ahead and take a look. 
All right, not too bad. You've got the basketball sort of flying through the air. Then you have this explosion that happens underneath it. So you do get kind of the prompt adherence a little bit better. You've got the basketball, you've got the hoop, you've got this explosion happening after the fact. This really, I've got to say, this reminds me of like the stable diffusion 1.5, maybe two days. It's getting a lot better and the video quality is a lot better, especially if you do image to video with something like Flux is the baseline image that you provide these models. But we're still seeing some weird prompt adherence and other things happening. Now these models, I think are gonna move really quickly and they're gonna advance to the point to where you've got photorealism in no time. All right, Kling Pro, let's see what you've got here. You got the basketball sort of shooting through the hoop. There is some sort of explosion. Looks almost like waves. There's water splashing off the clouds at some point. All right, it's really bizarre. I don't know what quite is happening there. Um, yeah, interesting. So although that's a simple prompt, pretty challenging for these models still. All right, this next one isn't in the meta benchmarks, but honestly, it's the only benchmark we need, I think. So this is Will Smith eating a plate of spaghetti. All right, Luma Dream Machine, let's see what you got. We've got, all right, uh, not quite. So it doesn't, it looks a little bit like Will Smith, not entirely, and it looks like the noodles come out of his mouth at first. That's really bizarre. Don't know what to make of that quite. All right, Kling Pro, what do you have for us here? We've got this nice plate of spaghetti. It actually looks really nice. Now, you can tell from the video here, the guy's hands are, uh, it's not Will Smith. We'll just say that. Um, you also, you never see the face. He never actually eats the food. And I don't know. So it's nice. The movement is, is natural. It's a really nice image. You could use this for stock video or stock photos, right? But it's not quite what I would expect given the prompt that we had. All right, Minimax, it's all up to you. Now, this definitely looks like Will Smith from the first frame of the video, so we're off to a good start at least. Let's see if he gets the spaghetti in his mouth. Okay, not too bad. Looks like there's a whole bunch of powdered Parmesan cheese or something on the plate. He sort of holds the spaghetti up to his mouth uh, interesting. It does look like Will Smith though. I'll give it that. This is definitely, I would argue the best of the three at actually following the prompt. So we're getting there from where we were just a few months ago. This is a pretty good result. This is a pretty iconic prompt. This you saw a lot when Sora first came to the scene. So photorealistic close-up video of two pirate ships battling each other as they sail inside a cup of coffee. What do you have for us here, Luma? The first frame looks fantastic. You've got this cup of coffee, the steam coming off the center. These looks like these waves. You've got the two battleships, which look a lot like the ships from the original Sora video. And then you've got, looks like coffee beans floating on the top. And when the animation kicks off and there's really not much motion, this is what I see a lot of times from Luma. It seems to really just do a lot of panning and tilting around a scene rather than understanding the individual objects within it, how they interact with each other, the physics behind them, and the motions that they need to take on. You can see there's a little bit of motion in the surface of the coffee itself right here, right around the ships, but just not what I would expect given the prompt that we gave it. Let's see what we've got for our battle here with Minimax. So if we look at this first frame, we've got a pretty detailed battleship here. It looks like one of them sinking in the waves. Let's take a look and see what this is all about. You get a little bit of motion. I would really expect sort of more churning. It's sort of panning across almost a lot like Luma did. Now you do see more motion. You've got this American flag on top of one of the vessels, which is interesting, but it's blowing in a breeze. You can't really see the edges of the coffee cup. It just looks like this gigantic wave in the background. Uh, I don't know. It's an okay result. Honestly, I expected much better from Minimax. All right, Kling Pro, that leaves you in the race. Let's see what you got here. Actually, it's not too bad. Okay, as it pans back, you've got this. It's in the middle of an ocean, which is interesting. It doesn't really look like a cup of coffee. I don't know, maybe. You've got some splashing around inside. You at least have more motion to the ships. It's a more dynamic scene than the other two. I think if this had gone on for another five or 10 seconds, it might've been pretty interesting, but nonetheless, gotta say Kling Pro probably wins this round.
Still nothing quite like what we saw from Sora originally. And for our next video, we've got a movie trailer featuring the adventures of a 30-year-old spaceman wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle helmet, blue sky, salt desert, cinematic style shot on 35 millimeter film, vivid colors. So the key to this one really is being able to follow each of those individual pieces of the prompt down to a key and also using that 35 millimeter film look. We'll see if any of these get it right. All right, Luma, let's see what we've got from you. First of all, this is a really nice looking image. It looks like you could see this in like the 35 millimeter film look. It has those vivid colors. Definitely a knitted hat that looks like a space helmet, something that you've probably never seen before. You've got the salt flats in the background, so it looks like that salt desert that it was talking about. Now here's the thing about Luma. I mentioned this before, but it really just does a lot of these slow pans. That's fine if you're doing this for B-roll footage or YouTube video, something like that, where you need that sort of nice cinematic look to things. But again, we don't get a lot of motion from the actual characters inside of these videos. It's really just about that slow pan. Cool result nonetheless, but that's what you get. All right, Minimax, let's see what you got here. This is actually really cool looking. So you've got this motorcycle helmet, actually looks more like a spaceman motorcycle helmet than the other one did, because the other one, you couldn't see the person's face. You've got a clear view of this person's face, the blue sky, the desert, and look at that motion. So you've got this really natural look and feel to it, sort of the camera shake. You've got, it appears that he's either riding a motorcycle or a bicycle, something like that, through the desert, blue skies, really really cool looking actually overall i've got to say this is something you could actually use as b-roll footage nice look to it well done mini max <laughs> let's take a look at this entry from kling pro oh man i can already tell from this first frame this is gonna be weird so all right you got uh that's kind of cool all right so the if the end was the beginning it'd be kind of neat so you've got this person wearing this woolish hat that looks like it's almost made out of hair if you look down at the bottom, but whatever. It starts off really bad looking. I mean like stable diffusion 1.5 bad, but then you've got kind of comes over the sand dune and this close pan up. I appreciate at least that Kling gives you a lot of action and dynamic motion in these videos. So not bad overall. Clearly Minimax is the only usable footage out of these three. For this next one, we're going with beautiful snowy Tokyo city is bustling. The camera moves through the bustling city following several people enjoying the beautiful snowy weather and shopping at nearby stalls. Gorgeous sakura petals are flying through the wind along with snowflakes. First up as usual, we've got Luma Dream Machine. From the still photo, looks really nice. You've got Tokyo, that snow, the flower petals, and that's actually really nice shot. We might have finally found what Luma is really good at. So you've got that panning, but in the background, you have this nice movement of the people. You've got the falling petals of the trees and the flowers, and you've got the snow. Really good overall look. This is something that with a little bit of practice and a little bit of cleanup, you could definitely use in a video. Let's take a look at the video from Minimax. This first scene, not nearly as good as the one that we saw from Luma Dream Machine, but let's see what the video looks like. You've got this nice panning motion, a lot of people walking around. I think if it had started maybe midway through, you could just, the background isn't very high resolution or detail. You've got a lot of weird motion artifacts. Look at the people's faces and such. Now they look okay when it's moving. So again, had it started sort of in the middle of the video and panned over to the left a little bit faster or sooner, wouldn't have been too bad. Now, there's not much in the way of snow or those flower petals falling from the sky. You can see a little bit of it, but not as good as the other entries we've seen from Minimax. And here's the entry from Kling Pro. Again, we've got that really nice motion to it. You can sort of see the bobbing motion, lots of people walking around, really bustling city. Now, we don't really have the Sakura flower petals coming down from the sky. We do have some snow, and it is a bustling city. You can see there's some problems with some of the things like these people's faces aren't really well defined, but you know, if you were just glancing at this, if it were upscaled perhaps, you could get a pretty good result out of it. I like the look of the motion though, overall, that it gives to the, the scene. All right, and for the final challenge, we're actually gonna do 
image to video. This is a flux image that was created right here on Pixel Dojo using my own fine-tuned, trained, one-click LoRa model. Now, the thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at three different models again, but this time it's going to be Kling Pro Runway Gen 3. Luma doesn't actually have an image to video model that I can access. And then the last one again, Minimax, and we'll leave that prompt optimizer turned on. We're gonna leave all of these to the same aspect ratio, same five seconds, and the prompt is going to be woman smiles, then walks off. Runway Gen 3, just like Luma, usually returns a result in under a minute. Very fast model. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, and she smiles, and then she sort of turns. All right, she didn't walk off, but you had this really nice look to it overall, I'd have to say. We got these people walking in the background. It's supposed to be in downtown Lisbon, Portugal, which it looks like it is. You've got, let's see, Dino, oh, I'm trying to read this shirt. It lost the Pixel Dojo logo. It sort of uh, made up its own logo, I guess, insane. So you get a little bit of uh, artifacting and hallucinating in these models, just like you do with an LLM or any other image model, but not bad overall, especially for such a quick model. Here's what we get back from Minimax. Okay, she smiles, Let's see if she walks off. All right, she's walking backwards. We had some things happen with some limbs, but I'll say this, it still has the Pixel Dojo logo on her shirt. It didn't lose any of that. I will say it's a little bit less natural looking for sure than what we got from Runway Gen 3. So this has its time and its place. This might not be the strong suit for this particular model, Minimax. As always, I'm Brian, and this is All Your Tech AI. We'll check you next time. Thank you.